now we're going to start talking about motion in two dimensions. Watch this clip uh, in the next slide to see how this uh, how this works in two dimensions. Here's a little device here that will shoot a projectile. A little spring, a little spring here. I'm going to compress the spring. And when I do that, I can put a projectile here and watch this gang, a little spring down. And out it goes. No surprise. But I've got another ball that I can put on the end here like this. And when I go like this, it falls essentially straight down. A little bit out, okay? But kind of downish. This one goes outish. Now I'm going to do them both at the same time. When I do them both at the same time, you guys got to figure out, hey, which one going to hit the ground first? The one that just dropped down or the one that goes out? A lot of people think, oh, the one that's fired out is going to be in the air for a longer time. You know why? Because gravity is going to start to pull it and say, oh, I didn't know you were moving. Go ahead. And gravity is not going to pull so hard. What do you guys think? <laughs> Let's try it. I tell you what, I tell you what. If you hear this, All A's. All A's. For this course, all A's. Register or say, Hewitt, my guy, Hewitt, you go all A's in your class. I'll say, I had a sharp class, honey. I had a sharp class, all right? All A's. But if you hear this, <laughs> then you got to do your homework. And da, 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 okay? Here we go again. Here we go. This, this, this next moment may be very important for a lot of you who are... Uh, <laughs> Everything riding in your grade. All right, here we go. Here we go. Listen. <laughs> What did you hear? How many heard this? Wishful thinking. <laughs> we'll do it one more time in slow motion. All right. Now you can get a better look this time. Slow motion. Here we go. All right? Same time, gang? Yeah. Gravity doesn't take a holiday on an object just because it's moving. So when we look at motion in two dimensions, we're looking at uh, motion that occurs both in X and Y components. So playing pool would be an example. There's motion in the X and Y. Throwing a ball to another person, not only is it moving in the Y direction, but also in the X direction. So each dimension of the motion can obey different equations of motion, and this is going to be a really key idea as we move into this. Um, when we look at uh, most solving motion in two dimensions, it's important to have what's going on in the velocity of x and y separately um, and looking at uh, both components. And then what we do is we work the problem as two one-dimensional problems and uh, because each can obey different uh, uh, equations of motion and then we can recombine them to get a result. So for projectile motion uh, we talk about something that's fired, thrown, shot, or hurled near the Earth's surface. Um, the horizontal velocity is constant because their uh, gravity does not act in the vertical direction um, and as long as there's no air resistance, the horizontal velocity will stay the same. The verti well, vertical velocity, however, is accelerated. And so we know the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and that's not changing. Um, we're, we are going to ignore air resistance. And so um, as we work, at least as we uh, initially work through, this, through these things. Okay, so for a one-dimensional projectile, um, this is where a projectile is moving in, in uh, vertical direction only, and we've done that. Um, we know, you know, we drop something off a cliff, we throw something straight up in the air and then catch it. Um, when we only calculate the vertical motion, um, and then there's no horizontal component. For two-dimensional projectile, that's most, both moving in the x and the y directions, and so there's acceleration only in the y direction. So this would be like throwing a softball to someone, um, firing a cannon off a cliff. Um, and we, we have to look at the vertical and horizontal motion um, separately. 
So we know then that in the x direction, uh, because there's no acceleration, the velocity is delta x over t. We cross multiply, so velocity times time equals delta x. And then we can add these variables here, v, v x initial um, times time will give us the horizontal displacement. And um, that's the only equation we can actually use in the, in the x direction. And that's really important to remember. And so let's say we actually, uh, we could turn gravity off. We can't do that, but let's say we could turn gravity off and we shot this um, cannonball and we took uh, snapshots along the way. So we took snapshots along and what we would see is it's covering the same delta x over the same period of time, not accelerating. The vertical though, we do have to follow the uh, constant acceleration equations. We can put our variables in terms of y if we would like. Um, so instead of having an x here, um, we can have uh, our y component. Um, so this is position in the y, this is velocity in the y. So v is velocity, y is position. So if we uh, took a cannonball and we actually just dropped that cannonball, uh, it would fall vertically like this. And so what happens is um, when we actually have a, a cannonball being fired, um, we can match each of the x ones here. So it moves the same in the x along the way. But in the y, it's just like if we dropped a ball. And so what we would do is, let's say we had a cannonball that was right here, and we dropped at the same time we, we fired one they would actually fall both together at the same rate. And so um, really it's the combination of the two when we, when we bring in the X uh, motion as well as the Y motion. Um, so both of these projectiles will actually hit the ground at the same time, which is not so intuitive. Um, some people, you know, like we saw in that video at the, at the beginning may think, oh, it's, you know, it's gonna take more time for that one that's going out further. Uh, but it's not because um, in the Y motion, the Y is the exact same. So let's go ahead and uh, try an example here. Let's say we have a baseball player um, that's at the top of a cliff, um, throws a ball with a velocity of 13 meters per second perfectly horizontally. So uh, perfect horizontal throw. Um, we want to find out how far from the base does it go. So uh, after you draw it out, we can um, draw this out. This is delta x is what, what we want to know. Uh, how far does it go? Um, we know that the height of the ball here is 100 meters. So that's going to be, um, you know, if we have our position in the y, y final is 0, uh, y initial is 100 meters tall. And so what we're going to have to do is um, take a look at an x, the x problem. And then the y problem. Um, in the x, we, we know that the only thing that works is v initial times time. So um, we know what v initial is because we know the velocity is 13 meters per second, but we don't know how much time it's going to take. And that's what we need to figure out how far. So time is actually going to come from the y problem because that is dependent on the acceleration due to gravity. Um, if someone took a baseball and actually just dropped it the same time he threw it, it would take the same amount of time for the ball to fall as it would for this ball to land. And so for the Y problem, um, and this is probably the most important part of this tutorial, V Y initial is zero because there is no velocity in the Y. If the, if the baseball player throws it perfectly straight out um, and only has an X velocity, which is this, there's no Y velocity. So when you calculate um, you know, y final equals y initial plus v initial times v y initial times time plus one half a t squared. The final height is zero. The initial height is 100 meters. And then this is zero because there's no y velocity. Um, and then we have acceleration due to gravity negative 9.8 times our uh, time. And we're looking for time. Um, and that's our only variable that we need. So when we solve for that, um, we end up getting a time of 4.52 seconds. That's the time that it would take for the ball to hit the ground. And then with that information, we can figure out how far it goes because we know the velocity, we know the x velocity, we know the, um, the time, and we can find the uh, displacement. 
Okay, so uh, I want to give you a chance to practice this. Let's say um, we have the river that's falling over uh, the cliffs here. It's 108 meters high. The river is flowing horizontally at 3.6 meters per second just before going over the falls, meaning that the initial velocity in the Y is zero because it's just going in the X direction uh, when, it's, when it's going off. Assume the water is in free fall as it drops. How far from the base will it hit? So what I want you to do is go ahead and write out what the variables are, and then um, set up your x problem and your y problem, and see if you can work it out. Um, very similar similar uh, situation to the last one, um, and see if you can figure out uh, what it is. So go ahead and pause the clip, and then when you're ready, you can go ahead and hit play. Okay. So here's all our variables. We know the initial x velocity is 3.6. The initial y velocity is 0. The initial height is 108. And the final height is 0. And the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, for our y problem to get time, um, we should get 4.695 seconds. And then once we know the time, we know the x velocity, the displacement in the x should come out as 16.9 meters. And so, again, as we look at the motion of the x and y separately, we can figure it out. Here's another one I want you to try. Um, let's say a person shoots an arrow 43 meters per second, the height of 1.5 uh, 15 meters. It falls 233 meters from the person. Um, what is the acceleration here? And so this is not on Earth, okay? Um, and so you're going to actually solve for acceleration in this case. So let's go ahead and set up a situation here. Here's the arrow. Um, we've got the height 1.15 meters and then the final height is zero. Um, we're actually looking for acceleration in this. We know the velocity is just in the x, 43 meters per second. There's no y velocity um, and we know the displacement. So um, go ahead and set up your x problem and your y problem and see if you can determinate the acceleration. In this one, you're actually going to have to work your way backwards because you're going to need uh, the x problem first. Okay, let's see how you did. Um, here's our x problem. We, uh, uh, with that, we know the x velocity. We know the displacement. So we can actually figure out the time that it's in the air. With that, we can move to the y problem and determine what the acceleration is on this planet, which is very, very low, 0 0.0783 meters per second squared. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and try this situation. Um, we're going to again determine, try to determine the acceleration due to gravity on this planet. And um, yeah, so go ahead and set up your picture first, set up all the variables and then uh, go ahead and try to solve for the acceleration. We'll see if you get it. So go ahead and pause and um, continue uh, once you've tried it and uh, you can confirm your answer. Okay, so um, our initial x velocity is 6.75 meters per second. Our height is 1.2 meters, final height is zero. The displacement in the x is 8.95 meters and we're looking for the acceleration. So for our x problem, uh, we've got our time then 1.3259 seconds is the time that it's in the air. And we can use our y problem, place that in there, and our acceleration is negative 1.365 meters per second squared on this planet. Okay, so uh, here's another one we can try. Um, this is a cannon that's being fired off a cliff and um, the velocity is 1.22 meters per second. It hits the ground 0.82 seconds later. So we want to find out how far is the cannon from where the ball hits, and then what is the distance of the vertical drop in this one. So again, um, set up all your variables. Uh, uh, write out your x and y uh, problems and see if you can solve for it. So I'll go ahead and, uh, or go ahead and pause, and then when you're ready, you can continue. Okay, so we know uh, we were looking for delta y and delta x, really. Uh, we know the initial velocity is 122. The time in the air is 0.82 seconds. 
and we know the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, so without much trouble, we can actually figure out how far in the x it goes because we know the time, we know the x velocity, so 100.04 meters is the displacement in the x. And then in the y, um, we're just, uh, we can pull y initial to the other side and look for delta y, the change in height, and uh, the displacement will end up coming out as negative 3.295 uh, meters. Um, should have a negative there because it uh, has a negative displacement. And uh, that's good. Okay, let's try this next one. Uh, we're throwing a ball horizontally to the second baseman with a speed of 22 meters per second. It's caught 0.5 uh, four or five seconds later. How far are you from the second baseman and what is the vertical drop? So um, this one you can try. Um, set up again all the variables and um, you know solve the X and Y problems and see if you can uh, determine um, what you've got there. Okay. So uh, delta y, vertical drop, um, the initial x velocity, 22 meters per second, acceleration negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, again, the initial y velocity is zero. And that's the critical piece here uh, because there is no y velocity starting out. Uh, we can set up our x problem. And we know the time again, and we know the initial x velocity. So we can figure out the displacement in the x. 9.9 .9 meters is the distance from the second basement and then the vertical drop would be close to a meter 0.992 meters